Yep, it's beeping. It works. Okay, here, Harv Kerman, Herbert Kerman, and Sally Kerman find themselves in orbit, a 30-kilometer orbit above the surface of the moon. Uh, our mapper is running. You can see here, I'm actually going to go up to uh, 10. Go 10 times time warp. And it is detecting things. So here's a cursor showing where we are in the course of, of our mapping. Here, let's hide that. And I keep looking down here, the beep, this, as if I recall correctly, the large, uh, the long-range muon detector can detect things uh, in a range of 150 kilometers. So, and you can see, you know, beeps louder as we get closer. It's supposed to have a light, a little blinky light that lights up, but uh, apparently that part is not working for me. And just a few minutes of doing this, Run into a few surprises. Okay, it all the thing always goes nuts right here over the pole. So that's that's worth keeping in mind. See now we're going away. There's apparently there's something is there. So that's very very interesting. I expect as it approaches up here close to this other. Uh, let me see. We have this large crater with a with a kind of a canyon attached to it. Uh, somewhere that I haven't narrowed it down much much closer than that you have to realize okay so here we are a 30 kilometer orbit you can see how far this that's the distance from the surface to to my to my spaceship so in the it, it detects things in, in a globe of uh, 150 kilometers around it that means it's actually scanning uh, a circle like about that size here in Sotel very very precise and scientific we are yep Beepity, beepity, beepity. Kill that map view. Let's go back. Let's go down to one time compression. And I get over. The, and I get over these areas where it beeps faster. And sometimes I, go, I slow it down to like no time compression. Go down to real time. And I look around. And most of the time. I don't see anything. I am. I'll, I'll just go ahead and I'll admit. I'm somewhat surprised at um, how many things it's beeping at. I was expecting that there'd only be like two or maybe three. Um, but it's beeping at more than that. I don't know what I'm expecting to see. I, can't, I don't see anything down here. I'm currently, uh, because because the, the, the vehicle is kind of imprecise, here is a plan I'm thinking on in my head. I'm going to maintain this 30 kilometer orbit for a while uh, until we build up a, a mostly complete map, uh, a height map of the, the terrain of the moon. Uh, after that, I'm thinking that I'm probably going to detach the, the satellite and send the satellite up to a slightly higher orbit and see if we can use it to be a little... A higher orbit means it'll be scanning a smaller circle on the ground. Maybe it'll be just a little bit more precise to help me narrow down exactly where I want to land. I mean, the just so I'm not going to be driving for like two, two years, driving driving the, the lander around, you know? Yeah, something down there, but it is it is an exciting time for e e exploration and science. the The moon detector, the muon detector, works. There are things to find down there, so that's that's very good. Uh, Herbert is excited about that. Harv and Sally, these are two of the wimpiest uh, Kerbals that I have ever encountered. This they're not excited about anything. So, yeah, I'm just going to continue this. It's, it's actually, it's kind of a, a soothing way to, to play the game. Just kind of chilling. Watch, yeah, go to more time compression. Checking out the map. It goes up here to the other pole and it doesn't really get too excited. It, it, it not as excited as it gets, the moon detector gets the, get really excited down at the other pole. Yeah, it's not detecting anything right now. So this would be a bad spot to land. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, see if it comes, it flies over the, the North Pole and it's all quiet. I feel like I have to speak in hushed tones. South Pole, though. There's something there. Okay, so it just picks up just at the very edge. Okay. So it's approaching the location. Let me see. It's going to get over here to the other side. I want to, on one of these other orbits before I started recording, I want to show you something. Beepity, 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 beepity. Ooh, we're definitely getting close to something, huh? And moving away a little bit from something then. All right, take it back down to real time. Kill the map. I wish I had a functional telescope. I wish the cameras on this thing were working. I've got, I put three, a uh, prospector carries three. Hang on, let me see if I can zoom in on this one. Yeah, we can see one of the cameras is right there. Um, no, yeah, not three. It's the, uh, yeah, prospector's got two cameras on it. One, one on the lander and one on the satellite. And I don't know where the camera and the satellite go. Yeah, yeah there it is. Yeah, right next to the, the mapping dish. And I, I should be able to uh, switch, switch the, I'm supposed to be able to hit F7, because I changed my key bindings, and switch to those camera views so we could actually see it and then be able to actually do the, the you know, the spaceship eye view. And then that's why I, I set these controls up and the servo to, to rotate the thing around. And I, I thought it would be, but it, it just doesn't work. I have to, I don't know, I have, I have the... The correct plugins installed. I dub double checked and re verified and downloaded the good stuff, but I don't know. Maybe maybe later it'll work. I hope so. Okay, so yeah, I imagine we're probably just gonna be. I'm, it, this is gonna take a while. I'm not gonna re record all through it. I'm just gonna just relax it and, and, wa and watching the moon go by and listening to the beeps, and I'll just come in and record and talk at you every once in a while. Okay, here we are. It was, as I slowed it down, you can see we made a little bit of progress in mapping. Uh, and just over this area, whenever I was cruising at the higher time compression, somewhere around in here, it got, it got to where it was beeping very fast. Which, that's interesting. The side currently in shadow. And the, yeah, the side that actually, that, that does face Kerbin. And I'm looking around, just in case I didn't see anything, you know, like a, I don't know, like crop circles, you know, except in the, in the, in the ash, in the, in the ash and the dust of the, of, of the surface of the moon. I am really, really enjoying this. I am enjoying this. Um, as much or more than going and bu building silly airplanes and flying them around and crashing them into things. <laughs> it's, 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 it's fun. It really is. So let's check out that map. Okay. Okay, so we take a look here. Let's see, if I barely got a start on on mapping the surface of this thing, but as I'm going around, around and around, uh, it's it looked like it, there's something worth mentioning, there's something worth looking at over here, there's something down here at the pole, and there was something over here on the edge of this big crater. Beep. Beep. Yeah, there's something over here. Making those beeps. Still running at that 10 times speed. See, I've got a little bit more of the map done now. Beep, 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 beep. Definitely getting close to something, huh? And 
it's like we're starting to move away from it a little bit, but we're pretty close to over the top of it, just judging by the speed of the beeps of these couple of these other places where we're just right over the top of something. Yeah, down there, that featureless gray expanse with, well, I suppose it's not really featureless. We got dark gray and we've got lighter gray, but some, somewhere in that dark and light gray, there's a muon emitter. Something is emitting muons, which I gather, I gather in reality, the muons that they, they can't even travel far enough. But so I guess these are, these are some other particle that the, <laughs> that, that, that Kerbal scientists are calling muons. They're not actually the same thing. So far, so far, um, of, of the things just, I mean, I've, I've, haven't even mapped half of the moon yet. Uh, so we, I, it definitely, it always goes nuts around here, around the South Pole. And you know, there was something else. Right now, if I, if I had to make a decision about where to land in order to, in order to do closer investigations, there's something that's around here. This, I would go there just because of the more interesting geography. A large, crea large crater, and we got this uh, canyon and all this, this broken, broken ground over there. There's something that's around over there. I need to pin, pin, pinpoint it a little more carefully before I start go thinking about going for a landing there, though. Uh, there's another possibility. And then, then there is the, yeah, there's the uh, other other object that was over there. But yeah, right now I'm I'm liking I'm liking the looks of I'm liking the looks of that one. But still, a lot more scanning to go. Okay, yeah, you can see, you know, we're still cruising around. We've got, uh, you know, better than half, well, more like a two-thirds of, of the, the map kind of roughed out. So we are making progress, identified a few areas of interest. Uh, one, th one thing I want to start recording here to kind of show this, I, th I think uh, by this point, I'm very, very much accustomed to every time it sweeps around the South Pole, it beeps, but uh, I was paying attention to it this last time. Let's see if we can... There's something that's kind of interesting here. I know that many, I don't know, may, perhaps even a majority of you listening, you've probably already know all about wherever all this stuff is in the moon. I've carefully avoided um, learning locations of all these artifacts myself. Okay, so as it approaches the pole, I expect it to start beeping any time now. Yep. So here's the actual physical pole itself, which I'll try and keep the cursor on. You listen to it, where is it beeps faster as it approaches whatever it's detecting. Still beeping faster. Still beeping faster. Still beeping fast. Notice that whatever and whatever it's detecting is not actually at the pole itself. It's more somewhere around here, around this area. So that's interesting. So I've identified that area of interest. Uh, identified, let me see, up on the on the other side, somewhere around here, between these craters, somewhere around here, there's something that makes it beep. Something over here that makes it beep. And something over here that makes it beep. I don't I don't think I'm missing any locations yet, although it's possible, still possible that I'll find another, another one. Got more, more moon to cover. <laughs> okay, more news as it develops. Okay, so here we are, back at normal time. You can see that I'm approaching to have uh, gone over the general area of the moon one complete time. I'm recording this at the same resolution. I'm playing this at the same resolution as the as the final video will end up being. So I'm thinking that you may be able to see this few pixels gl glittering in, in the distance there. I saw one other of these. Whatever that is, to be able to see it at this distance, uh, I was wishing I had a telescope, it, it's much larger than the monolith, which was, uh, which we saw on Kerbin. I, 
I think that's a second type of object that is not uh, like like one of the monoliths that I'm that I was expecting. Still, our, our next or our next few orbits going to take us closer, so we'll be able to get a better closer look at it. Uh, this time, my orbit's going to take me right over the top of that object we spotted last time around, so we'll get a better better closer look at it this time. I think. Yeah, you can see it glittering and twinkling away there. Slow this back down. It's definitely a something. I'm seeing a kind of a rounded shape down there. It looks to me... Yeah, it's something is the same basic color as all as all the rocks, you know, same kind of grayish asphalt color of the of the rest of the moon, but it's like a kind of an arch. It's an arch, yeah. Looks like a stone arch from up here. Does not look like a monolith. Still, it is emitting muons, though. So that's it's definitely something more to that arch than uh, than uh, you know a simple formation of rock. Really think how could uh, how could an arch like that form uh, on the moon? Because it'd be part of a, a molten bubble. That the, the edge of the bubble was harder than the rest, and it, micrometeoroids were. I don't know. It's really difficult to to imagine how such a thing could form naturally. I believe that is an artificial structure. So, I believe that in future missions we may come back and take a closer look at that. But for now, we're more interested in finding monoliths. So let's continue scanning. How far we got? Yeah, almost, almost done with the the first the first rough draft of the map. <laughs> 